To complete a release of information for a person or organization, please click the seventh menu option called Release of Information. First, you will need to enter your first name, last name, your date of birth starting with your two-digit month, two-digit day, and four-digit year, and your student ID number if you know it. This first section asks if you understand the confidentiality policy, confidentiality policy, excuse me, that was in the consent to counseling document. If you recall that and you understood it, you would sign here. If you don't like your signature, you can clear it and start again. You can use your mouse or trackpad to sign, or if you're using a touchscreen device, you can use your finger. Next, you will need to identify the person or organization you are asking the counseling department to communicate with. We will need a phone number, fax number, or address in order to communicate with them. Most often, we are given a phone number. You will need to select an option from the drop down menu indicating if you want us to be able to release information, otherwise known as share information, to the individual or organization, receive information from the individual or organization, or both release and receive information to and from the individual or organization. In this case, if I want to only have the counseling department share information with my doctor at Providence Medical, I would select release information. If I want the counseling department to only be able to receive information from Jane Doe, I'd select receive information only. In this case, I want both Jane Doe and my counselor to be able to share information back and forth. So I'm going to select both release and receive information. Next, you will need to describe the purpose of this release. Common reasons for releases of information include coordination of care with other providers, sharing a diagnosis, monitoring progress, helping you access a resource, being able to connect or be contacted by someone on your behalf in an emergency, so an emergency contact, provide or receive records or evaluations, or share information to help you advocate for yourself. In this case, Jane Doe is my medical provider and I want this release to allow for coordination of care. So I'm going to write coordinate care. In this box, you will need to identify the type of information you would like shared with the individual or organization. The primary types or categories of information that can be shared include mental health information, addictions information, academic or classroom behavior information, or you can write other and describe the very specific type of information you would like shared. If you want us to be able to share or receive information about multiple types, such as mental health, addictions, and academic or classroom behavior, you would list all three here. In this case, I want the counseling department and Jane Doe to be able to share any information. So I'm going to write mental health, addictions, academic, oops, and classroom behavior and medical information because Jane Doe is a medical provider for me. The next section is where you sign to give your permission. I want to go back actually for one second about the type of information. If, for example, I wanted Jane Doe to receive the diagnosis 
that perhaps a counselor had given me or the counselors to receive a diagnosis that Jane Doe had given me, but that was all I wanted shared, I might say mental health and medical diagnoses only. And that would be very clear about the information we would be allowed to share. To sign, again, you can use your mouse pad or trackpad, your mouse or your trackpad, or your finger if it's a touch device to sign this box. This last box is very important and a lot of students mistakenly put in today's date. The final step is to identify how long you would like the release to be active for. Generally, a release expires one year from the date you sign it. However, you can revoke or retract a release of information at any time in writing. If you'd like to do so, please notify your counselor so that they can help you walk through that process. In this box, you're going to choose how long you would like the release to be active for. But do note that a time period of less than a day or two could mean your counselor may not have a chance to take action on your release due to scheduling constraints. You could choose a date for the end of the term or after a particular event, such as graduation or a specific appointment. You can also choose to date it from one year from the date you fill it out. Please do not put today's date in this box as your counselor will likely not be able to use this release of information in such a short time frame. In this case, today is April 3rd, 2020. I might have a doctor's appointment coming up and I want my counselor to have this release active only until a week or so after my appointment, say next week. I might decide that I want this release to only be active until April 28th, 2020. Again, I could also choose to date it from one year from today's date, which would be 0403-2021. You get to decide the length of your release up to one year. If you're finished, you would hit complete form and continue. 